is coming. This week we're going to take a look at the 2021 Polestar Performance Edition from the National Car Rental. Just a quick reminder, go ahead and click that subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. And if you want to see more of these car review videos, go ahead and click the like button. And we'll start things off here. I'm just doing a quick charge on the 401 Highway here. And I'll just kind of give you guys a quick tour of that. National Enterprise and Alamo have the Polestar 2 available for rent at Toronto Pearson International Airport. And to book it online, you want to look for the full-size Elite Electric category. Alternatively, if you book any other class, you can always ask about upgrading into one if there is one available when you show up. There are two different versions of the Polestar 2 in the fleet, and that is the Standard Edition, and also the other is the Performance Edition, which is a $5,000 US option that we'll be taking a look at today. The Performance Pack bundles a set of specialized handling and power upgrades carefully tuned for the Polestar 2 long-range dual motor. More responsive, more dynamic, and more engaging. The easiest way to tell if you have this package is by looking for the yellow seat belts and the yellow Brembo brake calipers with cross-drilled rotors. The Polestars at the Toronto location also come with the Plus Pack, which includes the panoramic glass roof and Herman Kardon premium sound system, and the Pilot Pack, with pilot assist, self-steering and adaptive cruise control, cross-traffic alert, 360-degree camera, and the range, if fully charged, is up to 400 kilometers or about 250 miles. There is currently no requirement to recharge before returning, and you can return it at any charge level. On the uh, major series highways in Ontario, they have these IV charging networks. Uh, it's not free charging, it's paid charging, uh, but it is a little bit faster. It will go up to, uh, I believe it's 150 kilowatt hours. And I've just hooked up the Polestar here and we started charging. And the car was down to around 30%. So let's take a look at the charging speed here. Sorry about the noise. battery is pretty low actually we're doing pretty good we got about uh, let me step away so maybe you can hear me here when the battery is that low we're getting about 138 kilowatt hour charging speed which is pretty quick um, as the battery gets up around 50 60 70 percent it'll drop all the way down to it kind of levels off around 70 or 80 kilowatt hours which is still a fairly quick charge so we're just gonna charge up here and then uh, we'll take a look at the rest of the car All right, we've been charging. We've been charging here for about uh, 10 minutes, and we've gone from 30% to 50%. The charging rate has dropped down to about 100 kilowatt hours, uh, which is still a pretty decent speed. Uh, I'll probably cut things off here. It's fairly expensive at these uh, Ivy stations. It's $18 Canadian an hour for charging, uh, which is some of, one of the more expensive options. So. Uh, 10 minutes, just a quick stop here, and we added 20% of the battery, and we'll pick things up the rest of the tour of the car. And I'll just uh, quickly add in uh, some video of the dash here. It's a little bit easier to see. Uh, so we're up to 54% uh, now, maybe around, it's been charging for about 12 minutes or so, the charging speed, 97 kilowatts. And the range has actually gone up almost 100 kilometers in that, in that amount of time, in about 10 minutes or so here. One thing I noticed here after spending a bit of time on the Polestar is the center console is fairly wide compared to other vehicles. You can probably see it here. Um, so it cuts down a little bit on the leg room uh, for both the driver and the passenger. A little bit more noticeable on a longer drive. One of the really nice features we're taking a look at here is the wireless charging pad. And also beside it, the car only comes with USB-C charging. 
So there's no regular USB-A charging, just a heads up on that. It's a faster charging. Heated seats are also available for each passenger in the back seat. And even though I didn't show it here, the back seat folds down and gives you a lot of room. You can actually put a full-size bicycle in there through the hatch. To start driving the car, you put your foot on the brake and pull the shifter lever towards you to shift it into drive. At that point, you can let go of the brake, step on the accelerator and start moving. Uh, once you come to a stop, you can simply just press the uh, park button here. I'll put the vehicle in park. And one thing that's maybe not a clear to everyone with an electric car, uh, you don't really have to turn it off. Once it's in park, you just exit the vehicle, close the door, and you can lock the door and walk away. It's basically turned off. You can just tap the, uh, the spot on the door handle there. It'll lock the doors and beep and the mirrors turn inside. One quick note about the mirrors. Uh, a little bit different than other mirrors, the whole mirror body moves and the mirror inside doesn't move. There are a lot of storage options available in the hatch. Uh, what we're taking a look at here is part of it that you can pop up and the hooks we're looking at here, you can uh, hang your grocery bags in there so they won't be rolling around. Uh, and there's also another compartment if you lift that up and a couple prop rods, uh, just again for more, if you need deeper storage. The hood release to get into the front storage compartment is where you would find it on other vehicles. So you just pull the lever there and outside you just release the latch, which is on the right hand side. And you lift up the hood, and inside you have a very small storage uh, compartment here. Once I, once I get the hood opened up here, there we go. And so you can put a couple items in there, and if we take a look underneath the uh, divider here, uh, it's the uh, repair kit in case you get a flat tire. The infotainment has a home button. You can see me pressing it here right at the bottom of the screen, which brings up uh, several different options here. You can take a look at the range assistant. Handy while you're driving. It'll give you an idea how much electricity you're using. Uh, you can also go into the different drive modes here, just the steering feel. Uh, you can also turn on and off traction control for sport mode. Then there's the one pedal drive, which will control how much regeneration there is when you let go of the accelerator. Also some of the assist settings are available here. You can take a look at those. Uh, you can also change how much you want to charge, whether you want to charge to 70, 80, 90 percent. Uh, you can get a little bit more information here on the more tab. And here's how you get into Google Maps. Nice thing about Google Maps is it has the uh, charging locations built in. To get to the climate control, you can just click on something like the fan and it'll get you on the climate screen. You can turn eco mode on, heater, AC, uh, turn on the defrosters. You can choose where you want the air to go. One thing I found is with it in eco mode, it takes a really long time to change the temperature. Uh, here you can adjust the temperature for the cabin. Uh, there's also heated steering wheel, heated seats for both the passenger and the driver. And there's a number of additional settings here for the climate control. And if we go back into the apps, uh, we're just going to take a quick look at the range assistant there. Here's where all your um, radio and your Bluetooth uh, are for, for music, whether it's satellite radio or FM radio, whatever you want to listen to. This takes a little while to get the hang of. Um, one thing in here is Sometimes you have to scroll that window in the lower right up to, to get other items to display. So now we're, we're into satellite radio. You can choose your station, set your favorites. Uh, if you go to the Bluetooth player, um, if you have your phone paired, you can listen to music there. And 
here we're just going to take a look at the 360 camera and you can also bring up uh, let's see you want to take a look at the front camera or the rear camera sometimes a little bit more useful when you're backing up uh, especially if you're backing up beside something fairly close a couple settings on the camera It also has the auto brake, so if it detects something and you don't stop, the brakes should actually uh, come and stop and avoid a collision here. Another nice thing is that uh, you can also have the maps in your cluster display with the speed and everything. This We're just bringing up the trip uh, computer here. I believe it was clicking on the OK or the center button to bring that up. Uh, it took me a little while to figure out where that was hiding. And you can also change the uh, gauge mode. There's two modes there. One uh, has the larger numbers without the maps and the other has the maps. And that wraps things up for our look at the Polestar 2. Again, available for rent from uh, Toronto International Airport, from uh, National Alamo or Enterprise. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click on that subscribe button. And if you want to see more of these car reviews, go ahead and Click on the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.